Good day, beautiful people. We are going to be discussing places where bacteria hides in your kitchen. The kitchen sink's reputation for being the riskiest area of the room is owned to its role as a catch-all for both cooked and uncooked food scraps, particularly raw meat. In microbiology, a biofilm is a collection of microorganisms that are irreversibly attached to a surface and embedded in a self-produced matrix. Biofilms can form on a variety of surfaces, including living tissues, medical devices, natural aquatic systems, and of course, any area where there is an accumulation and settlement of water. Biofilm doesn't only smell bad, it could be hazardous leading to infections of Listeria, Salmonella, E. coli, MRSA or MRSA, and Legionnaire's disease. Pink stains appearing on bathroom fixtures, drain board surfaces, and pet dishes are usually from a bacteria. Some of the side effects of Salmonella is diarrhea, stomach pains, headaches, nausea, or high temperature. Some people have a tendency to put raw meat in their sink to quote unquote clean it. And this is something you have to be very careful of. And especially if you have young children in the home, you want to be careful if you're cleaning their dishes, their bottles and things of that nature. Make sure that you're cleaning your surfaces as good and well as possible. The kitchen dish rack is one place where a lot of people forget about. If you go to someone's home and they have an immaculate home, it's clean, there's no dust anywhere, everything's in its perfect place, and then you go to the dish rack and you see all this nasty grime and pink and biofilm and blackness, that is bacteria and that can be extremely harmful and make you sick. A lot of people, they get sick and have stomach pains and aches and fevers and all of this stuff and they don't understand where it's coming from. Well, it's probably coming from dirty surfaces in your kitchen, from your eating utensils, your plates, your dish rack. Because if your dish rack is dirty and you're putting your utensils and your plates in there and you're eating off of them and your pots and pans, then it's definitely going to transfer. So this is me just giving my dish rack a monthly cleaning and as you can see i am using peroxide i tried to use less caustic products because i do have a young child in the house so i try not to use bleach all that much and a lot of these other chemicals because natural products and items will do the job just as well i'm going to saturate my dish rag with hydrogen peroxide and i just let it sit for a while to let it penetrate and do its job. I use my oldest sponge, as you can see. And I use my oldest sponge because I don't want to use and waste a brand new sponge on cleaning a surface that's going to be contaminated. And then I could just go ahead and throw the sponge away. So I keep a bulk of sponges for cleaning things like this, like cleaning around the kitchen sink, around the faucet. If you look around the back of your kitchen faucet, you will see dirt and grime and grunge and biofilm as well. You will see it around the bottom of your toilet. You will see it around the faucets in your bathroom. You will see it around the bottom of your shower, your bathtub. All of these little nooks and crannies that a lot of people forget about when they're cleaning. And you have to clean these things because you do come into contact with them whether you believe it or not. You're constantly touching the kitchen faucet and there's bacteria there if you're not cleaning it often. You're always messing with the toilet. And if you have young kids, toddlers, and they're always getting into things, you want to make sure that these services are always as clean as they can possibly be. Because before you know it, listen, they're on the floor in the bathroom. They got their hands running across everything. They got their hand in the toilet. They have their hands all over the sink or where, whatever, you know. And it is very easy for things to get cross-contaminated. So here I'm just going to continue to clean and scrub my dish rack and get that nice and white and clean. And then I just let it air dry basically. Another good tip is to keep a spare brush, a brush that you use as the first brush that goes in on dishes or surfaces that you're trying to clean. As you can see, that red brush that I have, that's my oldest brush. You can see how it's all mashed in. And I use that to get all of the bulky dirt and food off of my dishes first. 
Uh, I did clean that with bleach after I finished cleaning the dish rack. But I do use that, like I said, to get all of the big and major food and particles off first. And then after that, I go into my fine tuning with a different clean brush and a clean sponge. So you can keep a spare brush to clean your, all of your dirty surfaces for the first clean and then keep a second brush to do your final clean. Be sure to break down your pieces so that you can get in all of the crevices and grooves and make sure that they are clean as well. I sprayed some peroxide on the surface under the dish rack as well so I can make sure that I got that nice and sanitized. I'm just rinsing and reassembling my dish rack at this point and I'm just going to let it sit and air dry. But again, this video is a reminder to clean all of those surfaces and areas and nooks and crannies that you may forget about. Clean and wash your dish rags often. Clean behind the faucets. Sanitize your surfaces in your kitchen and your bathroom. Clean around your toilet. Clean in all of those little places that you always forget about. Clean around the edges of your bathtub. Clean around those corners. Anywhere that there's water lurking and just sitting and stagnant and you have food and other bodily items and cells and fluid and all of that stuff, you wanna make sure you get those surfaces clean as often and as thoroughly as possible. So just to recap, in addition to cleaning all of the surfaces and items in your kitchen that you don't think about, be careful of putting raw meat and food into the sink. Make sure that you are washing your cloths in bleach if that's what you choose to get them nice and clean. If you take a second and you just go and smell your dish rag, you'll see that you probably need to give that a good wash because just because it's always in water doesn't mean that it's clean. Actually, it means the opposite because if it's sitting in water, you're not wringing it out and you're just letting it stay all balled up in the sink filled with water. That is a breeding ground for bacteria and contaminants. I hope that this video was helpful and you all be blessed.